So, you just bought a diode. Today what we're going to do is go through the process of how to set up, configure, and use your brand new Neuron Robotics diode. As you can see, the package comes in a blister pack with your diode, a USB cable, and your power adapter cable. Start by opening up the blister pack, removing the diode, the USB cable, and your power cable. And you can put the packaging aside. The first thing you're going to want to do after opening up your dial is to plug in the dial to your computer. Now, if you are running on Windows, you need to install the NRSDK first. We are assuming at the beginning of this video you have already installed the Neuron Robotics SDK that includes the dial drivers for Windows. Uh, Mac and Linux do not require drivers, and the Neuron Robotics console, which is what we are going to be doing our demonstration with. Start with your standard USB cable, plug the computer side into the computer, and plug the other side into your diode. You'll notice it'll sit yellow for a little while and then flash five times. Once it flashes, it's ready to start working. Since this is a brand new diode, the first thing we're going to do is put it into bootloader mode by taking a paper clip with the end bent, plugging, pushing it into the reset hole, holding the hole until the light starts flashing as so. And now your dial is ready to have the brand new bootloader loaded onto it. You come over to the computer, start up NR console, which is a standalone jar file. For Windows, type in the Windows start bar NR console. For Ubuntu Linux, type in the start bar NR console. For Mac OS X, it will simply be a .jar file in the bin directory of the Neuron Robotics SDK zip file. As you can see, we are using Mac OS X for our demonstration. So the device nodes comes up as slash dev, slash tty dot USB modem, and then some unique identifier depending on your dial. Go ahead and connect to it, and you'll notice that it is ready to take a new firmware. It'll already bring up the directory where the firmware is located, and you should grab your uh, dial firmware. Make sure that the number here, 3.8.5 for this demonstration, matches up here in our console, 3.8.5. And go ahead and open it. From this point on, in our console will take over the process and load a brand new firmware to both core microcontrollers inside of the dial. And with the dial flashing five times, it's ready with its brand new firmware. Back on the computer, we can make a connection to our new dial, connection set connection. And it will come up with the serial port once again. We connect to it. And this time you'll see the display for the Neuron Robotics dial. Just as an introduction to NR Console, uh, all of the documentation is available online. And uh, what you see here when you uh, first boot up is all of the channels should be set to digital input. If you ever want to reset all of the channels, you just click the Set Default button and it will reset all inputs back, uh, all channels back to inputs. As you click around, you'll notice each channel has its own panel. If you hold down the control button and click 
a second panel. You can get more than one to show up and you can scroll through them. And if you ever want more information on what is taking place with a panel, go ahead and click the help button and it will bring up the documentation webpage for that feature. In this case, it is the digital input channel. Digital input channel page and all dio uh, example pages have a description of the channel, what it does, a uh, small video demonstrating how to use it with hardware. We're not going to get too meta and play the video of the screenshot with the video uh, inside of it. Uh, and then further down here is all of the source code for how to access that channel. Now we're just going to go ahead and close that for now. To change the mode of a channel, you simply click on the drop down and select a different mode. For more detailed information on how many modes there are, what the modes are, and how to access them, please see our other videos and documentation. Uh, the list will be in the pop-up. We have digital input, digital output, servo output, available on all 24 channels. Uh, there is a select set of four channels that have hardware PWM, that's full duty cycle PWM. Uh, there are four uh, DC motor interfaces. There are four quadrature encoder channels, four stepper motor output drive signal channels, uh, a, uh, a UART serial with a serial port, which is available on channels 16 and 17. You have counter inputs, which is a quadrature encoder reader, counter outputs, which is a stepper motor interface. You have analog inputs on channels 15, 8 through 15. On channels 8 through 15, you have analog inputs. You can set those to be analog input values. And you'll notice it's an open collector, so it'll read the, the voltage from just hovering your finger over it. Uh, there are PWM channels, as example by And what this value is, is a 0 to 255 value representing a duty cycle. There is also the DC motor interface on the same channels that are... Uh, uh, um, there's a DC motor interface on the same channels that have the PWM. DC motor uses the PWM for its velocity signal. And then you'll notice channel 9 changed as well, which becomes the DC motor direction flag. On channels 0, 1, and 2, you have an SPI channel. The interface is on channel 0. This lets you send SPI commands uh, using the dial to any SPI peripheral. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to set all the DIO channels back to digital inputs, simply click the Set Defaults button, and the DIO is reset. 